tax incidents means who ultimately pays the tax. Most people assume that because sales tax is collected from consumers, it is the consumers who ultimately pay the sales tax. But this assumption proved to be wrong most of the time. Remember, there is always a supply side and a demand side to any market. It is the interaction between supply and demand that determine who pays what share of the sales tax. Let us look at the typical supply and demand curves of a generic market. With these supply and demand curves, the market clearing price and quantity occurs at the intersection of the curves. What happens when a uniform per unit sales tax is imposed by the government? Since the seller must pass on the collected sales tax to the government, he will continue to supply the pre-tax quantity only if he could still keep the pre-tax sales price. Essentially, the supply curve is shifted upwards by the amount of the per unit sales tax. A vertical upward shift of the supply curve means that the quantity supply has decreased at the same before and after tax price level. In other words, supply has decreased due to the tax. The new market clearing price quantity point must then be shifted to where the post-tax supply curve and the unchanged demand curve intersect from here to here. As you can see, the sales tax has greatly reduced the quantity bought and sold. The post-tax price did not rise by the full amount of the per unit sales tax. In fact, it rose by only half of the per unit sales tax. Before tax price, after tax price. Then who pays the other half of the per unit sales tax? It is the seller, as it now receives a lower post-tax price. Here the seller and the buyer split the per unit sales tax into halves. Because the absolute slopes of the supply and demand curves are identical, this angle measure the slope of the supply curve, and this angle measure the slope of the demand curve. These slope angles are equal. Equal slope angles mean equal elasticity of supply and demand. If the absolute slopes of the supply and demand curves are not identical, the relative shares of the per unit sales tax will not be equal. Here, demand is more inelastic than supply. This angle measures the slope of the supply curve, and this angle measures the slope of the demand curve. The slope angle of the demand curve is larger than the slope angle of the supply curve. That means demand is more inelastic than supply. When demand is more inelastic than supply, buyers pay a larger share of the per unit sales tax. Let us see a side-to-side -side comparison. On the left, demand and supply are equally elastic. Buyer and seller pay equal share of the sales tax. On the right, demand is more inelastic than supply. So buyers pay a larger share of the sales tax. When buyers continue to buy the same quantity regardless of prices, the demand curve is a vertical line. A vertical demand curve indicates perfectly inelastic demand. 
with perfectly inelastic demand, the after tax price will go up by the full amount of the tax. Buyers end up paying the full share of the per unit sales tax. On the other extreme, if buyers are willing to buy an unlimited amount at a fixed price, the demand curve is a horizontal line. A horizontal demand curve indicates perfectly elastic demand. Since buyers are not willing to pay more after tax, the market clearing price stays the same before and after tax. Before tax price, $100. After tax price, also $100 but seller gets only this price. Essentially, sellers end up paying the full share of the per unit sales tax. To summarize the effects of different demand elasticity on tax incidence. In other words, the more elastic the demand, the less the buyer pays. And the more inelastic the demand, the more the buyer pays. When the elasticity of supply and demand are equal, as indicated by the equal slope angles of the supply and demand curves, Buyers and sellers pay equal share of the per unit sales tax. If the absolute slopes of the supply and demand curves are not identical, the relative shares of the per unit sales tax will not be equal. Here, supply is more inelastic than demand. This angle measures the slope of the supply curve. This angle measures the slope of the demand curve. The slope angle of the supply curve is larger than the slope angle of the demand curve. That means supply is more inelastic than demand. When supply is more inelastic than demand, sellers pay a larger share of the per unit sales tax. Let's see a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, supply and demand are equally elastic. Buyer and seller pay equal share of the tax. On the right, supply is more inelastic than demand. Seller pays a larger share of the sales tax. When sellers continue to supply the same quantity regardless of prices, the supply curve is a vertical line. A vertical supply curve indicates perfectly inelastic supply. If demand remains unchanged, the before and after tax price remains the same. Before tax price, equal to $100. After tax price, also equal to $100. Sellers end up paying the full share of the per unit sales tax. On the other extreme, if sellers are willing to supply an unlimited amount at a fixed price, the supply curve is a horizontal line. A horizontal supply curve indicates perfectly elastic supply. After tax, the fixed supply price is simply raised by the full amount of the tax. The fixed price retained by the seller 
stays the same. If demand remains unchanged, buyers end up paying the full share of the per unit sales tax. To summarize what we have learned on the effects of different supply elasticity on tax incidents. In other words, the more elastic the supply, the less the seller pays. And the more inelastic the supply, the more seller pays. Now that we have looked at each side of the market separately, it is time to have a general summary of tax incidence and the elasticity of supply and demand. In other words, the party who is more insensitive to price changes ends up paying more tax. Let's relay elasticity of supply and demand to the size of tax revenue. This equation shows that tax revenue is a product of the tax rate and the quantity sold. If the sales tax reduces the quantity sold by a lot, the tax revenue collected would be very small. Therefore, the maximum amount of tax revenue would result when either the demand or the supply of the good in question is inelastic to price. In these cases, the quantity demanded is not affected by the tax. On the right panel, demand is perfectly inelastic. When demand is perfectly inelastic, the quantity demanded is not affected by price. Per unit sales tax generate the maximum amount of tax revenue. The area within this rectangle represents total revenue. Here, the tax falls completely on consumers. That explains why sin taxes are so popular. Because the demand for sins is fairly inelastic. And it is politically correct to make sinners pay. Cigarettes and alcohol are well-known targets for sin taxes. But not all goods with inelastic demands are sin goods. Life-saving drugs have fairly inelastic demand, but are not generally considered as sin goods. On the left panel, supply is perfectly inelastic. When supply is perfectly inelastic, the quantity supply is not affected by price. Per unit sales tax also generate the maximum amount of tax revenue. The area within this rectangle represents total tax revenue. Here the tax falls completely on suppliers. Because the quantity supply is not affected by tax. Tax on goods with inelastic supply would not distort economic transactions. Henry George, an American economist of the 19th century, has been credited with being the first to propose a single tax on land, since the supply of land in general is limited.